Hey guys, it's Sam with The Blind Life. Welcome back to the channel where I help you learn how to live your best blind life. Today we're gonna go through all, or we're gonna try and hit all of the settings that you can adjust on your Mac that will make it more accessible for low vision. As always, full disclaimer, this is just a general guide. Some of the things we're gonna talk about might not apply to you in your own personal situation, but these are things that you can do that will help the majority of people with low vision. First things first, changing the wallpaper. I recommend doing this on all devices, your computer, your smartphone. Set a good high contrast wallpaper. Now I have gone just with black, pure black here, but it doesn't have to be straight black. You can go with a abstract design, a gradient, whatever it is. The key is to make it high contrast by making it dark and not busy. To get into your wallpaper, you can do it through settings, but you can also right click on your desktop here, your home screen, and you can go to change wallpaper. This will bring up your wallpaper settings. So for example, let's just choose this one here. This is what comes by default on most Macs. You've got this uh, aerial shot of some farmland here, and this is great. But if you notice my icons up here in the upper left corner, my shortcuts, they're a little hard to see up here because the folder is kind of a light blue color. It blends into the sky. The text is white. It blends into the clouds. And so there's not enough contrast in this wallpaper. Another issue you might run into is if you have a picture of your family here, you know, your wife, your kids, your husband, your or mom, your dad, whatever. It's a very busy background. And so your icons are going to get lost in that busy background. So that is why we tend to recommend using a solid color or a high contrast abstract design just so it provides the most contrast. I personally go with a black because it offers the best contrast. Next, speaking of these folders up here, let's see if we can make those a little bigger. An easy way to do this is to right click on the desktop and go down to show view options. And this brings up the settings for your different view options. And the second section down here, icon size. So first let's bring these over here so we can see what we're doing. But if I move this slider over, we can make our icons much bigger. Below that we have text size and this is a drop down menu here. If we go all the way to the bottom, 16 times font size here, this is much better. You see as we're zoomed all the way out, this is much better. Now I might still have some issues reading this, but we're gonna be using the zoom magnifier anyway. Okay, speaking of that, let's jump into our settings. Two different ways to get into settings. You can click on the icon, the settings icon. You can also go up to click on the Apple logo and then down to system settings. Both of these essentially bring you to the same settings here. Scoot this back over. First, we're gonna go down to accessibility. And our first section here is vision. We're gonna skip over voiceover for now, but we're gonna click into zoom. And I'm currently using the zoom magnifier here. One nice thing about Apple is they give you a lot of options here, a lot of customization. You can use keyboard commands to zoom in. You can use the trackpad if you have one. And you can also use the scroll gesture with the modifier key. You can turn these on or off. And here you can choose what that modifier key is. You can choose the zoom style. I prefer full screen. That's just what I've always done. But we have a couple of options here. Split screen puts the magnification at the top of the screen. And wherever your pointer goes, that's what's magnified. And we have picture in picture. This essentially creates this little magnifying glass that follows your pointer around. And you can magnify in and out within that, that little window. We have an advanced section. We'll go into that here in a second. But at the very bottom, you have hover text. Hover text is pretty cool and may be useful for a lot of people. Essentially, you hold down your command button and whatever text is underneath the pointer gets displayed in a large window just below that. Let me zoom out so you get a better effect here. There you go, holding down the command key and it gets displayed and it works for wherever you are. Whatever text you hover over gets displayed in a large text format. All right, let's jump into advanced. 
These are your advanced zoom magnifier options. First section is appearance. And this top part here, you get to choose how your zoomed image reacts when moving the pointer around. I know that's not the most clear, but here I'll, I'll demonstrate. I personally choose to keep the pointer in the center. So wherever I move my pointer, it always stays in the center of my screen. Unless I come over to the edge and then the pointer goes to the edge, but it always stays locked in the center. This is just my favorite way to use it. It's the way I've always done that. But you have a couple of op other options. This one is when the pointer reaches the edge. And essentially that's what it means. The pointer is free to move within your magnified area. And then when you reach the edge of the magnified area, it's like the pointer pushes that magnified area over. So if I want to go back this way, I push it over with the pointer. And this can be helpful for those that they want the screen to stay solid, stay in place, and you move the pointer around. Those people are going to prefer this mode. The other option, continuously with pointer. This is kind of like a splits the difference between the two. So now the pointer stays kind of in the middle, but also kind of pushes around when it reaches towards the edge, if that makes sense. This is hard for me to do. I know some people love this mode. Um, that's not really the way I like it, but once again, it's all about options and they give you options. So definitely try out all three of these and pick the one that works the best for you. I won't go over all of these. Um, some of the important ones are smooth images. This you can turn on if it's turned off, when you get to larger magnifications, if you see my pointer there, it gets kind of pixelated around the edges. And some things can be difficult to read because of that. So turning it on will smooth the edges. Now, it does make it slightly blurry. I wish it were a little bit sharper, but it's definitely better than the pixelation. Flash screen when notification banner appears outside zoom window. This is great. Whenever you get a notification, generally they pop up in the upper right hand corner. And if you are magnified in here reading something, you might not even notice that a notification has popped up. So this will, enabling this will cause the screen to flash, letting you know that there's a notification. And then the only other one that I like to turn on down at the bottom is toggle zoom. What this does is when you press these two buttons which are right next to the ones that you press to zoom in and zoom out it quickly zooms out it basically turns off the zoom magnification and lets you see the full screen so the benefit of this is if you're doing high magnification here and you want to jump to another part of the screen very quickly instead of having to zoom out you can just tap that move your pointer over in that area and let go and it zooms into that new area all right next let's jump into display and there are some things in here that you can play around with, um, invert colors, things like that. A lot of these are going to be the same things that we go over on iPhones and iPads. Uh, reduce motion could be helpful for some people. Increase contrast, yes, we definitely want to turn that on. Reduce transparency, yes, we wanna turn that on as well. Then at the bottom of that section, display contrast. You'll see as I drag this, it darkens the screen. Now you can go pretty dark where some of the elements get completely blacked out, but this adds a lot of great contrast and I generally leave it probably about the one third over. This is generally where I leave it nice and contrasty. All my menus here have a nice dark background. Hey guys, Editing Sam here. So apparently it seems that this effect does not transfer over into the screen recording. So what you guys are seeing now, it looks like nothing is happening. But when I'm doing it on my device, there's actually a very dramatic change. The background of all the windows gets much darker. So even though you're not seeing it here, definitely check it out on your own machine. All right, let's get back to it. Text size, you can come in here and change the text size, play around with this, and you can even change text size in specific applications. Pointer, we can adjust the size of the pointer. We can make it really big and you can also adjust the color of the pointer. You see mine, I have a yellow outline around it. That just helps me to find my pointer a little bit 
more easily. Color filters, this is if someone has some type of color blindness, they need to adjust the color filters. You can do that in this section. Next, we have spoken content. This is going to be great. First, at the very top here, you can choose your language. Then below that, you can choose your voice. You click on it and you've got a wide variety of voices. You can even go down to the very bottom to manage voices and unlock a ton of other voices. I did a whole video about the novelty voices available on Mac. I will link that in the description down below. But you can adjust things like the speaking rate, the speaking speed, the speaking volume. You can play a sample. And then we have some options here that could be very helpful. Speak announcements. This is great to have turned on because once again, anytime you get a notification up here in the right corner, it will speak that out loud to you. Speak selection. Whenever you highlight a certain selection of text, you will get an option to play that selection out loud. Speak items under the pointer. I usually have this turned on. I turned it off for the recording here, but when it's turned on, it just reads out whatever the pointer touches. General, screen time, focus. I think that's great. It kind of reinforces what I think I'm seeing. Speak item. But I'm gonna turn it off just so it's not speaking everything out loud while we're trying to record here. Now, you have other sections here in the accessibility settings. You have hearing, you have motor, speech, and this is an interesting little section here. There's even this personal voice where you can record your own voice to use as the spoken content voice. And then we have the general section at the bottom, which is Siri and Shortcut. I'm gonna jump into Shortcut real quick. If you're familiar with the accessibility shortcut on an iPhone or an iPad where you triple click the home button, this is what this is. This is the Mac equivalent of that. So you can come in here and you can turn, toggle these on or off depending on what you want to be triggered when you hit the keyboard shortcut. And it shows you what the keyboard shortcut is right there. Okay, that wraps up accessibility. We're gonna jump into a couple other sections over here and that will be just about it. First, let's go into desktop and dock. And here you can set the size of your dock. Now, once again, this is the dock down here at the bottom where you can put your favorite apps. So if I slide the slider left or right, I can change the size of the dock and set it to whatever size that I want. Now, there's a lot of things in here you can customize that have to do with the desktop and the dock and the way windows are displayed and things like that, widgets. So I recommend coming in here, going through all of these options and just play around with them, see what's gonna work the best for you. Next, we're gonna go into displays. In here, you can choose the resolution of your display. So the only reason I want, kinda wanna make you aware of this is that changing the resolution can also affect how large items are on the screen. If I do a lower resolution, like, Currently, I'm viewing this on a 4K screen, which would be the very top one, 3840 by 2160. But by setting it to 1920 by 1080, which is what it's set to by default, all of these items on my screen actually look larger than they would if I had it set to 4K resolution. Setting it to a lower resolution can make items larger. All right, last thing I want to look at is appearance. So here you can set your theme, essentially. You can do a light theme, a dark theme, or auto. You can choose an accent color, whatever color works the best for you. You can choose the highlight color, sidebar icon size you can adjust, and then adjust how the scroll bars look. So just more things to play around with and customize to work the best for you. Now, once more into accessibility, just to talk a little bit about voiceover. Voiceover is Apple's screen reader. And if you need it, it's right here. But if you need it, here it is. But I definitely recommend trying out some of those other spoken content options first. See if that's gonna be good enough for you. If you need voiceover, that's fantastic. But just note that it's gonna take a lot of training to learn how to use it proficiently. And it might be very frustrating at first. <laughs> All right, guys, so that's how to set up a Mac for low vision. Remember that a lot of this is subjective and might not apply to everyone, but I definitely recommend you get in there, poke around, try some things out, see what's gonna work the best for you. 
If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. If you would like to learn how to set up a Windows computer for low vision, I will have that video linked in the description down below. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel, turn on notifications. I post content like this every single Saturday. Thank you guys for watching. Sam with The Blind Life. I will see you next time.